There are two events that I look forward to every summer in the Merry Kingdom of Sussex, England. The first is the Loxwood Joust held in Loxwood Meadow. The second is England's medieval festival which takes place at the 15th century Hurstmonceux Castle. I love these events. I love the reenactment, the jousting, the living history, the traders, the birds of prey displays, the refreshments and the entertainment. And even though I am not a member of reenactment society myself, like many members of the public, I love getting dressed up and participating in the spirit of the occasion. Therefore, I knew that I wanted to make a medieval inspired dress to wear this year, even if the world had other ideas. The pattern I used for this dress is a free one from So So Easy for a knit fit and flare dress. Not only is this free, but there is a YouTube tutorial that goes along with it, which is linked in the description. To make it more medieval, I created the front bodice from two pieces that would lace together, since the fabric I used would not have the stretch of a knit fabric. I extended the skirt to full length and added triangular goddets gauze? Gordeaux? between each of the skirt panels to really make the skirt flare. I knew this would work, as I'd used the same technique and pattern to create a pale blue linen dress last year, inspired by the one Amanda Seyfried wears as Valerie in the 2011 film Red Riding Hood. It has princess seams over the bust, which were not common in the medieval period, although they are very occasionally referenced in contemporary work. You will frequently find them in costumes claiming to be medieval as well, so maybe we can call this history bounding. The fabric I used is a navy blue cotton printed with moons and stars in gold. I'm pretty sure it's a quilting cotton, and when I found it in a local charity shop, that was what I intended to make. But the more I looked at it, the more I thought this would make a gorgeous dress. I had to be careful though, because it was donated as remnants, about 4 metres in total, and once I'd used up my supply, there was no way of getting more. I made a mock-up for the dress from a navy blue fabric that I didn't film, but once I got the fit right, I took the mock-up apart and used it as pattern pieces so that I could make the best use of my fashion fabric. Because of the limited fabric, I had to create the skirt and bodice patterns separately, necessitating a waist seam. Looking at the portraits of upper middle class women, you will notice that when it comes to jewels sewn to clothing, it's a case of go big or go home. I mean, look at this portrait of Queen Elizabeth I. Those white dots on her dress are pearls. When I decided to use this fabric, I knew that I wanted to add a bit more sparkle. To do so, I purchased these gold rhinestones which I intended to attach over some of the gold dots on the fabric. My first job was to transfer the pattern pieces onto the fashion fabric in chalk. I'm going over the lines again here because they had faded. Then I cut out each piece.
I decided to keep all my offcuts, also known as cabbage, as you never know when these will come in useful. Once I had cut the pieces out, it was time to add the rhinestones using gold metallic thread and making sure I had seam allowance. I can't really pretend that this is historically accurate at all, but it just looks so pretty! I started by simply sewing, then realised that I could work faster if I glued the gems down first as they wouldn't move around when I tried to sew them. After burning my fingers a few times, I clocked onto the idea that I could add the glue to the fabric and place the gems on top of it, limiting ouch moments. I would like to think that if this ever was done historically, the gems would have been affixed with rabbit skin glue and sewn down. All in all, I spent weeks sewing nearly 9,000 gems onto my fabric. To put that into context, that's almost the same amount of gemstones that were added to Lily Jane's ball gown in the live-action Cinderella film. Watch out when working with these though, because even when you are supposed to be able to sew them onto fabric, they will occasionally be missing the appropriate holes. When I ran out of thread, I had to get more, and accidentally got more than I will probably ever use. Since my fingers were hurting from all this sewing, I had to take a quick break to make a leather thimble, following Bernadette Banner's tutorial. I then used a piece of tape to remove the cobweb-like residue from the hot glue, and pressed my embellished material using a piece of cotton to prevent any stickiness ruining the iron. All the threads on the reverse of the fabric are just asking to catch and pull the whole thing apart, so I decided to place an identical sized piece of fabric over the back of each piece, ironing it down and treating the two layers like one piece to be sewn together. I believe this is called flat lining, but feel free to correct me on that. Being a woman of the 21st century, I knew that my dress had to have pockets, but wasn't sure that I had enough of my fashion fabric to use, so I sewed a strip an inch and a half wide or so at the top of each of the pocket pieces, since this is the only part that will be seen from the outside. At last, it's time to start machine sewing, connecting all the embellished pieces together. You'll see that I ran out of pale blue fabric for the flat lining here, so had to resort to orange. I was making this while the UK was in lockdown and had to work with what I had. My last task was to add eyelets to the front, which would enable the dress to lace closed. The Great Plague of 2020 might have cancelled the Loxwood Joust and Medieval Festival, but Hurstmanstow Castle itself was open to the public with restrictions in place, and it was the ideal opportunity to wear my dress. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. It's heavy with embellishment and really sparkles when it catches the light. I 
I accessorised with a homemade necklace of faux pearls and a gold pearl hair snood that I bought from Etsy. And since we live in plague times, I of course needed a face mask, made from some of the offcuts and more gemstones. I told you that cabbage would come in useful. Thank you so much for accompanying me on this journey of medieval mayhem. If you'd like to see more videos like this, feel free to leave a comment below, subscribe and follow me on Instagram. I'd like to try a beginner-friendly historical project for this autumn, so if you have any suggestions, let me know.